test test one two hi guys this is damaduck82 and we are back here for part three of my aircraft tutorial uh, this time we're gonna try building us a small cheap jet fighter so let's go ahead and get that started So, usually, like I said in the last video, when I'm trying to build an aircraft, I like to start with the area where the main thrust is going to go first. So, let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, I think I need to change that to a 2 meter beam. And we're going to mirror this. Now, the kind of configuration that I'm thinking of going with for this build would probably be something akin to like maybe an F-15, something like that. At least that's the plan I had in my head, but we'll see as we go. Usually the hardest part though about building aircraft in, from the depths is just trying to get a good shake down. Once you figure out how to do something that looks pointy and fast, you usually can build just about anything you want. So, let's see here. Now we want to go ahead and grab us some thrusters. And we're just going to go ahead and grab these big old huge jet engines, slap them on the back like that. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and grab some of these 4 meter beams and just do like so. And I think, let's see here, how do I want to do the back of this? I'll just go something like this here, I think. Uh, actually, that could come back a little further. Yeah, there we go. Let's see here, then we want to bring this just a little forward, not too much. Now with 45 degrees using these blocks, it's okay because, well, let me show you something here real quick. Now, if you look at the, uh, the stats on this block, it's got pretty good drag reduction. So you don't have to worry about spamming these a bit. So we'll just continue on down like that. And I think just so it meets up a little nicer here, we're just gonna take a few of these and put them like that. Now we wanna put a couple of these in here for the tail plane. And I think I wanna grab this beam and move it down here. Yeah. And I think I kind of want to do this. Yeah, that's looking good. I'll just bring that just a little bit forward. Grab this piece here. There we go. And we will just bring this curve on down like that. And Hmm. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Now 
Now again, you don't have to do it like this. This is just to give you guys some ideas. And we do want to have a little bit of room here down through the middle. This is where we're going to be putting our engines and so on. I'm going to grab some of these and we're just going to do a fill command on either side of the rear here. Now let's get some slopes and try to smooth that off a bit. I think it's looking like a pretty decent plane so far. Alright, so let's put a fairly simple engine back here. We'll go ahead and grab our engine generator. And I think we want to move it just a slight bit forward. Like so. And crankshaft, where is that going to come out? Right there? Okay, we can live with that. And... One more. Okay, now we're going to grab our cylinders, do like so. So I think right here, hmm, I'm debating whether or not I want to go with injectors, but 400 power would probably get us by pretty well now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, let's see here, fuel engines, we're going to go ahead and grab some hull pipes, and there we go, now our engines will be able to breathe, very important that they breathe, and what the hell, we'll go ahead and give them just a little bit more power. Okay. So let's bring this forward a bit, and now we're going to grab these 2 meter wedges here. I think we want to go like this. Now a white body is kind of a good thing to have, it keeps the plane aerodynamic for starters. Also. Wide bodies give you more room for pretty much everything, uh, fuel, ammo, AI, weapon systems, engines, so on and so forth. So it can generally be a good thing to have. And we're just going to bring this 45 degree taper back on into the fuselage. I will be sure to put this up on the Steam Workshop for you guys after uh, the video here, so keep an eye out for it. And I think I just need one more. Because I want to do a 4 meter wedge. Uh, no, actually, let's bring it in just one more. There we go. Now we don't really need a whole lot of ailerons, so we're just going to stick those right about there and make sure they're facing the right direction. Of course they're not. For some crazy reason, they never seem to be the first time I put them in there, or ever for that matter. If you look at these wings, we got all of this available space that you can use to mount all kinds of weapons. Kind of nice, right? I'll show you guys how to do that here later on. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and start putting on the bottom. Just kind of bring this out. Go ahead, 
Fill that in. There we go. And how do I want to do this? I'm going to grab these here. Actually, I think I might be better off with. Let's go with a three meter. Now, the reason why I went with that is so all this up here will line up better. And I went and grabbed the wrong piece for that. I need that one. Actually, I think maybe I could go with a two meter. And as we get to the front of the plane, we're going to do one of these and one of those. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? I think it is. Now then, let's go ahead and grab us a wedge. And we're going to grab us the correct beam. There we go. And there as well. Hope you don't mind my cat going nuts there. I think he's got a bit of the zoomies. Yep. He got the zoomies. Seems to be his thing whenever I want to record something. When you're trying to do your shaping though for your aircraft, try to see if you can get these uh, slopes to work as much as you can. Reason being is slope pieces are always going to have less drag. Uh, one way, way to show you is uh, you just check the tooltip. It'll tell you how much of a uh, drag that it's going to have. Okay, so let's put these corner pieces on. That's looking like a speedy low plane right there, isn't it? Very nice, very nice. Okay. I'm trying to think of how to best put in some ammo here. Uh, let's go resources and we're going to get a couple of these boxes here. That should be enough. Just providing it with a little internal armor here, so that way if these ammo boxes tend to... If they happen to blow up, uh, won't take anything else with it, hopefully. And we can cover this up. That should do it. Alright, in this engine I think it's 
probably not going to be running full tilt all the time, so I want to put some of these carburetors on it just to try to get a little bit better fuel efficiency out of them. All right, so next we probably need to put in some fuel. So let's go into resources, hub into fuel storage, get a couple of these four meter beams of fuel. Now the great thing about these fuel boxes, you can just kind of squeeze them into anywhere. And I don't know if I've mentioned this, but in From the Depths, uh, fuel tanks are self-sealing. Which is a great thing because no one wants their planes to explode. It's always kind of nice to have. Alright, so we have kind of a cockpit there. And I'm just going to slap a chair in here just so Rambot will have somewhere to sit. Again, you don't have to do this. Actually, let's scoot them up just one more. There we go. So in here, I think we have enough room for AI. So let's go ahead and pop in our mainframe. And let's see, card slot. Now we're intending for this thing to fight against other aircraft. So we're gonna go ahead and grab us a target prioritization card. And we want this to go after, actually let's set these all to zero first. We want it to go after whatever's closest, whatever's the fastest, and the highest. Now then, I think that's probably going to be good enough. Maybe just turn the bullet count a little low since aircraft tend to be a little on the small side and from the depths. Awesome. And we probably need a pre-configured card. Again, we're going with the uh, bombing run airplane AI. So we want to switch this up for altitude relative to target, like we did last time. Uh, I think we want a combat altitude of about 400 meters. We're going to hop over into maneuver here. We're going to just go ahead and set this at it 10 degrees from there. And we want to go ahead and crank up that idle thrust. Just max it out. I mean, you can always go back and change it, so it's not a big deal. Adjustments. Uh, let's go ahead and set these all for 400. Okay, all good there. And I want to go ahead and add a water start because that will be handy. Reason being is every now and then your planes will go into the water. Unless you're playing Ashes of the Empire, where they're just going to go straight to the ground. So we're going to go ahead and just stick some hot air balloon deployers, like right about there. And we want to give this just a little bit extra armor because it's sitting right next to that AI right there. Alright, so we got that. And we're going to plug those holes back up with some 2 meter beams. Alright. Now down here by the AI, we're going to give it some detection. Uh, I think we want to go with a wireless snooper. We're going to turn that mirror line off. 
And over on this other side, I want to give it, I think, a transmitter. So let's go back under AI and grab a wireless transmitter. There we go. And we're just going to pop that guy right there. All right. So we're probably at a pretty good point where we can let this thing take off. And look at her climb. She just barely sipping fuel too. How about that? Uh, 73 meters a second's okay for something like this. So let's have a look at its drag. The lighter the area, the better. Yeah, all those surfaces that are coming in contact with the air first, those are the ones that you, know, you want lit up like this. So I think we're okay there. Now there are a couple of sneaky tricks that you can use to get these to go just a little bit faster. I'm about to show you one of them. So let's just go ahead and drop that beer line back down again. And we're going to take off several of these. And then we're going to take back several of those. And we can go ahead and refill this. I think right about there will do. Then we're going to grab us a 3 meter beam, go like that. And under air, we can go ahead and grab some of these. Now you got to make sure that there's about 8 meters of clearance on the back side of these things for them to work properly. Alright. Uh, that gave us just a few more meters a second. That's awesome. So let's go back here and see if we can do it some more. We're just going to go ahead and take these off for a moment. And we're going to grab us some more of these. And put them back here like that. Oh yeah, that almost got us up to 90. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? But can we do more? Hmm. You no, know, I think we can. I want to see if I can get this thing up to about 90. There we go. Yeah, that that's pretty acceptable right there. 89, 90 meters a second. It's not bad at all. I think we could do just a little bit more. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Maintaining a fairly high altitude. That's great. Now, I was going to run this all the way back here, but then I figured that uh, there wouldn't have been enough clearance for these, so that's why I did it this way. Because you need at least 8 meters behind these thrusters for them to work correctly. Alright, so now for a trick on how to hide all these damn thrusters. So you go up to your thruster, and you click on this button right here, allow particle effects, and then you hit spread to neighbors. You still get the thrust out of them, but you won't even see the particles anymore. Isn't that cool? And we can do the same thing on these back here, spread to neighbors. And over here, spread to neighbors. 
Now on this thruster back here, I'm thinking I want to do something a little bit different with it. Um, I think I'm going to just stick an ion thruster in place of this one. Yeah, that'll work. And we're going to do the same thing with it. Sometimes in front of the depths, your aircraft will have a very nasty habit of going into space. Uh, if you're watching this tutorial, then you probably had that happen to you on occasion. So we're trying to minimize that here. And I think, let's see. Yeah, we can just leave that empty for now. I wanted to do something kind of cool and decorative down here real quick, though. Something like this. There we go. Now, we're going to try to hide these just a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into decorations. And we're going to grab our mimics. And we're going to go mimic alloy. And we're going to pop some alloy mimics on here. So, what we need is a wedge. We're going to grab the 2 meter alloy wedge. It looks like we don't quite have it right here, so we're going to... pitch it upwards like that. And then we're going to roll it. Ninety degrees like that. Now we can move it over this way like so. And we're going to widen this. The left and right scaling. Oh, I guess it doesn't want to do it that way. Okay. There we go, it's the up and down one it wants us to use. Okay, that's fine. And then we're going to copy and paste those settings over to this one using Control C and Control V. Now then, going to move that over to where it covers those up. Once that's painted, you probably won't even know it's there. And I think we're going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to put our mimics down again and we're going to paste that setting and we're going to position the block Uh, we need this to pitch down and we need to make it come back oh wait I, I think I got the wrong one yeah that needs to be the uh, one meter my mistake wedge alloy wedge one meter there we go and we just make sure it lines up with the texture there and we will copy that over to this one. So we'll probably need to change this like that. There we go. All right. So how do we want to try doing a weapon system? Well, hmm. Let's do this. Nothing crazy. Nothing too crazy, anyway. We're going to go with missiles because they're always a good weapon. So I want to put this missile block about there. And then we're going to grab a friendly fire. 
or friend, IFF, the friend or foe. Now, I think we're going to. Hmm. I think we're going to go with small missiles. We're going to grab the rail launcher, and we're going to go down here underneath our missile block. We're going to start mounting our missiles. Now, early campaign, I cannot stress this enough, um, probably your best bet is going to be radar-guided missiles. Later on, um, you'll find that there's a lot of stuff with flares out there, and it's probably going to make it harder to hit things. So that is something to be aware of. So let's give this thing some decent missiles. Um, Ecto radar is fine. That is a lot of fragmentation though. I think I want to switch one of these out for a turning thruster. And we're gonna go over here to our variable thruster here, have that selected. I want to pump up that thrust a little more. We're going to go ahead and max that out. And then we're going to go here and we're going to start changing these to regulators. And we want this thrust duration and lifetime to basically line up. 20 seconds is probably going to be good enough for this I think though. And we're going to have some pretty fast missiles here. And that turning thruster, that's going to let it get on target a lot quicker. So we probably need to save this. So we're going to hop into here. We're just going to grab one of these blank spaces. I'm just going to save this as tutorial. And then we're going to go over here to this side. And we're going to go to save load, we're going to click on tutorial, go into the editor, we're going to copy all of those like that. Though I am thinking now, hmm, I think an APN would do us a lot of good here. Yeah, let's go ahead and slap an APN in there, turn that gain up nice and high. APN is going to keep the missile pointed at the target no matter what, as best as it can. And the reason why I chose an, an APN is that it works very, very good for very fast aircraft. There. We're going to crank that gain up as high as it will go. And also the nice thing about adding these is um, it, it's going to extend your fuel just a little bit. Well, I'm thinking... Maybe I want to just get a little more life out of these missiles, so I think I'm going to move the, put another regulator in like that. Yeah, that'll work good. And we're going to save back over the tutorial here. Oops. My mistake. I went and screwed that up. My bad. Now, with APN guidance, actually the guidance systems, they don't take up the whole slot. So uh, you can go down here and have that uh, leftover area for reinforcement, HEE, EMP. I usually just go with fuel. There are a couple of instances where if it's like a free fall bomb, you want to go for like HE or EMP. Okay, so we got APN guidance. Excellent. We're going to save back over this here. Oh, we forgot to turn that gain up. There we go. These should be some fairly nasty missiles here when we're done. And we're just going to copy those settings over to here. Awesome. 
Now, I usually don't go with explosive missiles for air to air, and that's because explosions can throw off missiles, which is a huge pain in the butt. Alright, so I think we're going to put the wireless controller back here. Like so. Alright, now we can go up here. And I think I'm going to use a pleaks to cover this. So let's go into blocks. We're going to go a pleat panels. And I think we're going to go with a couple of these 2 meter ones. That'll help reduce drag a whole lot. Or we could even go with the 3 meter ones to reduce it even more so. Why right, hell, let's go with the 4. There we go. That'll give it some resistance should it get hit. Normally I would go with like putting um, the alloy plates over the top thing but it looks like they got a little bit of drag to them and mm, this is something that we want to keep fairly fast so we want to keep our use of these to a minimum like so and also adding those missiles that has add, added to its drag and our top speed has gone down to about 86 87 that's still pretty good though I think we can live with that. Okay, so we're going to need some kind of detection system. I think we're going to put them down here. So I'm going to go ahead and make some holes for the detectors. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab some connectors pop those down there. Alright, detection. I think I want to go with a 90 degree camera and make sure that mirror line's turned off, of course. I think I'm also going to go with a where is it? Ah, laser rangefinder. There we go. And we're going to go back under blocks here and we're going to go over to glass. And I'm just going to show you this cool little trick Heistmeister showed me. Where if you take a glass piece, like this one, it'll reduce the drag that's in front of your sensors. Pretty cool, right? Alright, so we're going to hook these up to our mainframe and see, yeah, I kind of figured that would happen. We just need to expand its processing power. We can do that pretty easily. So, hmm. We'll go back up here and we'll get some general purpose processing cards. 97% that should get us to 100 right there yeah I think we're doing pretty good so far and I think I'm going to change some blocks out up here just to see if we can get a little more speed out of this and just to see if it can make it look a little nicer but I think going this fast with uh, these jets, I think we're doing pretty good, if I'm to be honest. So let's see here. I want to 
go ahead and grab another mimic alloy and grab a wedge I'm gonna have it go backwards and we're going to have to twist it into place There. Now, unless anyone had told you, you wouldn't even know that is going to be there. And that's kind of what we want to do with our mimics. So let's go ahead and add one over here. And we're going to put one here and here. All right, so let's see if we can hide our shame here. I'm gonna go with a three meter alloy beam. There we go. And we probably want that to come up. And let's just zoom the camera back a little. Uh, in case you need to do that, you hold down E, and then you can kind of just manipulate the, the camera however you need to for your project. So we're going to move that back slightly. Now I know it looks like your wing parts are still clipping through the block. That's okay. You have a way around this. You just go to left and right scaling I think and just bump it up one and that edge is going to be so minute you're barely even going to know it's there so we're going to copy those settings and put them over onto a block over here there now we got all that hidden And we're going to grab a 2 meter beam and do the same thing over here. Oops. Make sure you don't have that box selected with the cursor when you're doing that. Alright, now we're going to move our block up. We're going to move it back. And once again, we're just going to take that left and right scaling. And we're going to bump it up just by one notch. We can copy and paste that settings over to the other side. Like so. All right, so this part might be a little more challenging with the mimics. So first we're going to grab us another three meter. I probably scrolled right by the damn thing. Yep. There we go. We go back up here. And I think we want to go left and right with it. Uh, we're going to yaw it 90 degrees. Like so. And we're going to bring it back to about there. Now the this one we're going to go up and down scaling just a bump so we can hide that. We can copy that over to this mimic here. And then we just 
put a negative number in front of the left and right positioning. Actually, it needs to come over just a little bit more, like so. Awesome. We're just copying this again because we can just reuse that one. It doesn't matter if it's a three meter or not. There we go. Now jets is a little more important for you to have uh, the least amount of drag as possible. So that's the reason why we're doing this instead of the, um, the plates. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm thinking we might be good enough to where we can just fill that in with a regular block and call our good. And I think we can make this look a little nicer up here too. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do this, and we will change this over to a regular 4 meter slope like that, and then we'll cover this up, like so. So let's say, see so we can go into our options here. Um, we don't want this thing to pitch at the targets necessarily. Um, ring that, that's actually probably all fine for a fighter like this. So we'll just call that good for now. But yeah, since it's a fighter, it doesn't need to pitch, especially since it's got missiles. And since we got that water start. Eh, uh, thing added to it over here in additional we can activate balloons all right now this is probably going to need some ammo processors so we're going to go ahead and put those I think just run them right down the middle here and I think we're, this is all eating the outside of the craft. I want to give it just a little bit more heavier armor. So we'll do it like this. Actually, can this go back further? Yes, it can, good. Excellent, okay. We'll, we'll go back and fill that hole here in a sec. Put some paint over that, you won't even know it's there. Okay. And we'll do that. Let's do a quick auto adjust on these detectors. Nice. And I think I want to give this thing just a little bit ability to roll so it can maneuver. Um, I think we'll just go with like about 45 degrees returning. I think that should get us by. Now we do need to have some material storage in here. Hmm. Where can we put that at? Eh, actually up here towards the cockpit will probably be just fine. Go resources and material storage. Let's we'll just grab some of these tanks and put them here, like so. All right. Well, I think we are ready for a combat test. 
So we're going to go ahead and save this thing. Now, something I forgot to mention that I probably should right now is the reason why I chose to go with Alloy is uh, it's going to give your plane less of a radar cross signature, so it's something to be aware of. If you're going with more slower craft that you're not so worried about being hit, then you could probably be just fine using um, metal. I mean, in theory, you probably could have made this out of metal, probably would have been okay, but... Yeah, so let's set up our local weapon controller. Now we don't want this these missiles to be going after targets that are either too far underwater. So let's set the range. I think we could probably get about two kilometers out of these things, just by a rough guess. Um, minimum range. I think they'll probably be, be okay where they're at. Uh, minimum altitude, yeah, we definitely want a minimum altitude. Probably go with like maybe negative 10 meters, probably be okay. And we're going to copy that over to our other local weapon controller and paste it there. Awesome. Now we probably need to set some firing restrictions on the missile controller, which I just realized I have put this thing in the wrong flipping spot. Oops. I think we could still work with this. Just gotta figure out how to retetris this thing. Uh, mirror line up, yeah. Ah, my mistake, guys. I should have seen this coming. Okay. Friend or foe is going to go there, and these are going to go there, and that's going to go right there. That's the way it should be. Okay. So since we still got those settings, uh, we can just control V and control V there. Awesome. And over here, we're going to drop a three meter beam in there. That'll be one of the nice things about this design is that you guys will have lots of room to mount other weapons on these wings if you ch so choose so, or I'm sorry, choose to do so. Got a little tongue tied there. Uh, okay, so we want to make it to where these missiles will only fire forward. So we're going to reduce this to about, actually that could that'll probably be just fine. We're going to go in here and we're going to change all these to 20. And we can copy these and put them onto another missile block. Yeah. And I think just for funsies, I'm thinking of adding another weapon to this. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a local weapon controller, put it like right about there, and we'll probably not, well, yeah, we probably will need a fail safe for what I have planned. So let's go ahead and grab one.
uh, go back to AI, grab our failsafe here. There we go. And we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just put some more pleaks up here. I think this time I'll go with a 3 meter. Like so, and we'll put a 2 meter back here. Try to keep that drag nice and low. So now we're going to go into a new object. We're going to grab a turret. I'm going to grab a 2-axis turret. We're just going to slap it right there. And we're going to go into simple weapons. And I think... Yeah, we'll put some of these 30 mil assault cannons on here. Just for a little extra added deca. I went and screwed it up. Uh, let's try this again. Okay. We're going to copy these to the clipboard. Now, I'm not expecting these to do a whole hell of a lot of turning, so I think we could probably get by with putting some slope blocks. Like so. There we go. And we'll put another two axis turret over here too. And we're going to copy and paste our settings from the last one like that. And then I'm going to go in here and we're going to grab some, no that's not it, some more 30 mil salt cannons. Like so. There we go. I'm not really expecting these to turn very much, so if they collide with that metal piece, it probably won't be too big a deal. Okay. We probably need to save this real quick. Now, since this is going to be a combat aircraft, we're going to go in here and we're just going to put a couple of repair bots. Don't need too many of them. That should be enough. I think that's kind of everything that we need right now. Yeah. Okay, well let's save it. And we're going to spawn in an enemy. Um, let's go ahead and put it up against a plane. Let's give it a drake and a duster. And we'll see how she does here. Uh, missiles are on target. Oh, I think we got him. Oh, that just barely missed. Here she comes back for another round. 
Get them 30 mils going. Oh yeah, beautiful. Though it seems that we don't quite have enough engine power. That's why we test people. I think what we can do... Well, I think I'm gonna pull that block out. I'm gonna pull that block out. And we're just gonna replace these with just some regular two meter beams. Then I'm gonna grab these carburetors. There. Now I got a little bit of power to spare. Actually, I could have just done this and not compromise the armor. Yeah, let's just do that instead. Here, now it's got a little extra power. Um, save it once again, and I'm going to give it just a bit more fuel, I think, because this seems like it's going to eat a lot of it. So let's see where we can add some. That looks like a good spot. There we go. All the rest of that area is probably just going to be mimics. All right. Now let's see here. That's not too bad a price tag for this thing. It's moving almost 90 meters a second too. So let's spawn in another plane, something a little bit heftier this time. Oh, look at that. Did lots of damage in just one pass. Probably moving a hell of a lot faster than a two, I'd imagine. Yeah, 34 meters a second versus 90. <laughs> now you don't have to go with auto cannons. Um, I just did because I thought you know, having all the tracers coming out would kind of look cool. So. And boom, daka daka, look at that. I probably could have built this thing a whole lot more cheaper and faster. But I just wanted to give you guys something that uh, that you could pretty easily do on your own. I mean, this thing, you slap some paint on it and it'll look like a pretty damn good fighter, I think, in the end. You even got like this cool little cockpit area.
All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, hope you all got something out of this. Uh, this has been Damodoc82 with part three of my aircraft tutorial series. I think next time we're going to try and see if we can make us a very, very simple hovercraft. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching. You all have yourselves a hell of a day and keep your hammer high. Later. <laughs>